You're now looking at the weigh-in scene this morning. Don Fulmer stepping on the scale at 159 pounds. I told you that many people regard him as a colorless young man and a colorless fighter, but nobody has ever contested his bull-like determination. And they haven't contested the fact that he deserves this shot at the middleweight championship. In fact, it was ordered by every boxing jurisdictional authority in the world. Now, remember, there's Nino on the scales this morning. He hit 160 on the button. And, of course, his good looks speak for themselves. It was an uneventful weigh-in scene. Now we're back live at ringside in the Ariston Theater here in San Remo, Italy. Announcement being made by the public address announcer. Quickly, the referee for tonight's bout is a gentleman named Piero Brambilla. Piero Brambilla. And the judges are Mr. Baravecchio and Mr. Carabellisi. Mr. Baravecchio and Mr. Carabellisi. Judgment will be very important tonight, particularly by the referee, because a fighter can be disqualified. And I want to make special note of that fact and emphasize it. A fighter can be disqualified if he is three times during the course of the contest warned by the referee, either for low blows, butting, cuffing, or hitting on the brakes. You're getting a scene at ringside right now. This, of course, is, and I must emphasize this to you, an RAI pickup, Italian television pickup, that we are bringing to you pictorially. And we await the start of round one. You see Nino Benvenuti, the champion, with his manager, Bruno Amaduzzi, rubbing his stomach. The bell for round one. Benvenuti in the black trunks, Fulmer in the white. How quiet the arena has gotten, except for the noise when Nino landed a left lead. This is the quietest scene I have ever borne witness to at a fight. Not a sound. Noise whenever Nino lands, and there has been, as you can see, very sparse action, and Nino did land a glancing left jab against Fulmer's left shoulder. You will see Fulmer do throughout the fight what he just did, charge in. The referee will not break them as long as either fighter has a hand free. Benvenuti in black, Fulmer in white, round one, San Remo, Italy, Ariston Theatre, middleweight championship of the world at stake. <laughs> Must urge you to take note of the quiet that exists until Nino connects and then not to pay too much need to the outroars when Nino does connect because in their understandable enthusiasm for their champion, the spectators are wont to over-evaluate the damage he is doing with his blows. <laughs> we have one minute to go, and this is the first round where really virtually nothing has happened. Benvenuti in the black trunks and Fulmer in the white. seconds to go in the first round. Fulmer <laughs> charging. No damage.
back at ringside, round two, middleweight title fight. Benvenuti defending against Fulmer. Benvenuti in the black, Fulmer in the white. Again, note the quiet that exists in the arena. Fulmer charges Benvenuti. Benvenuti, I might add, appeared to have won a first round that had very little action in it, but Benvenuti appeared to have won it cleanly. He did land a couple of lefts. I might also add that at ringside with me, are many notables of boxing, including Gil Clancy, the manager of Emil Griffith, who, of course, fought Benvenuti three times. And from time to time, we'll check out with Gil on how he unofficially is scoring the fight. Also near us is Teddy Brenner, the matchmaker of Madison Square Garden. minutes to go in this round two live and in color on ABC's wide world of sports the middleweight title bout from the Ariston Theater in San Remo Italy and so far ah, the first perhaps reasonably good exchange with Fulma landing a pair of blows to the midsection which should be throughout the fight as principal target and Nino coming back with a combination to the head Keep that left moving into Fulmer's face, if he can, throughout the fight. Trying to set him up for the right, particularly the right uppercut that proved to be Griffith's undoing, particularly in Emil's first fight against Nino. We have a minute to go in round two. And that left of Nino's is getting in there. Not doing real damage, but getting in there. I'd like to prepare you for the fact that when a... Ah, good left by Nino. Board draws from the crowd. Just a push off. No damage. Not the result of a blow. Fulmer moving back against the rope. Good left by Nino. And left is getting in steadily. Less than 30 seconds to go in this, the second round of the middleweight title fight. Nino showing ring presence. He's a sophisticated ring general. He's had 80 professional fights after having been Olympic champion back in 1960. 177 of them, lost only two, drew one. <laughs> That's the end of round two as we follow Nino Benvenuti over to his corner. Nino so far apparently controlling this fight by the use of his left hand against Fulma who has been seeking to bull and get to Nino, but not effectively. You're on Don now as he's being wiped off by Angelo Curley, his trainer manager in effect, and his dad. Don's dad is here together with Don's brother Jay. Gene is back in Utah raising quarter horses and pelting mink. Don Fulmer. Don't write him off. He's a tough young one. As Gil Clancy, to my right, could tell you, he fought Emil Griffith twice, lost to Griffith in 62, beat him in 65. Can't comment too much on the strangeness of this scene. Not a sound from the crowd until and unless Nino connects. The bell for round three. Live and in color via the satellite, ABC's wide world of sports again with a championship fight. Middleweight crown at stake. Referee, a gentleman with a baronial name, Piero Brambilla. Don did connect with a left then, but not a very effective one. Glancing blow. Two minutes to go, and this is the third round. You 
apparent winner of the first two rounds would have to have been Nino Benvenuti in control because of the intelligent use of his left hand primarily, Fulmer unable to get to him. As we noted earlier, Fulmer is a fighter who backs off, backs off, and then suddenly charges in, as you say. A minute and a half to go in this round. Looking at Gil Clancy's scorecard next to me, just an unofficial barometer from a boxing expert, he gave Benvenuti the first two rounds. And Venuti in black, Homer in white. Thus far about notable only for its absence of action. One minute to go, round three. will get excited if Nino waves. They should. They paid $80 a ticket. Benvenuti in the black trunks, Fulmer in the white, middleweight crown at stake, Benvenuti defending place, a theater in San Remo, Italy. Housing, 2,000 people, most of them paying $80 apiece for the privilege of singing. Beginning a little bit to get to Benvenuti's midsection, but he gets the warning from the referee, and that's what I had wanted to prepare you for earlier. In this fight, the referee will issue cautions and warnings akin to those many of you saw in the Olympic Games. Don't get excited about that blow, no damage. And when you see the referee, turn to the two judges and hold up one finger and point. Time will be suspended in that round, and he will be telling the judges to deduct the point from the fighter being warned. The last against the Fulmer was not a warning. There were no points deducted. Discretionary matter with the official. In this round, Fulmer has done his best fighting. He did get a left to Benvenuti's midsection that hurt Benvenuti. According to Gil Clancy, Benvenuti's ribs are something less than strong. And there's Fulmer again to the midsection. The first round, he's beginning to get to the body of Benvenuti with some degree of regularity. We have 1.15 to go, and this is the fourth round. they'd yell if Benvenuti waved and missed a wild swing and they yelled. <laughs> Benvenuti in the black, Fulmer in the white. Fourth round, middleweight ground at stake. San Remo, <laughs> Italy in the site. Live and in color on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Twenty seconds left, and this is the fourth round.
tonight we're between the fourth and fifth rounds here in the Ariston Theater in San Remo. And once again, you're looking into the corner of Nino Benvenuti, the defending middleweight champion of the world. Now you're looking at Don Fulmer, once again being rinsed off by Angelo Curley, his trainer manager. And as I gaze at the unofficial scorecard of Gil Clancy, who must be regarded as an expert in this area, although his scoring, of course, is just a barometer, he has Benvenuti ahead 19 points to 17 points for Fulmer at the end of four rounds. Again, you're in Benvenuti's corner now. All right, it's the fifth round. Benvenuti against Fulmer, Benvenuti in black, Fulmer in white. The first four rounds. Benvenuti pretty much in control and about that has lacked any real action, any real excitement. Gil Clancy's unofficial scoring. Remember, Gil manages Griffith. He knows both these fighters, Griffith having fought them. Between the two of them, a total of five times. Gil has Benvenuti ahead, 19 points to 17. Teddy Brenner, the matchmaker of Madison Square Garden, has Benvenuti ahead, 20 points to 16. Unofficial, of course, but a pretty good barometer. Some blood beginning to show on the left side of Don Fulmer's nose. That comes from Benvenuti's left getting in there steadily. Yes, you can perhaps see the blood as we get our next close-up of Don. The left nostril. The left side of it. Benvenuti is outsmarting Fulmer all over the ring. And I might add, it's the smallest ring I have seen in a championship match. And the smallest ring I have seen since I was upstairs in a place called the Thomas a. Beckett Inn in London where manager Jimmy Wicks was training Henry Cooper to fight Muhammad Ali. See that left? Get in there, steadily. Steadily, steadily. That's what Fulmer will have to break through and he hasn't been able to do it. That right of Fulmer's landed on Benvenuti's arm. No damage. But that left of Benvenuti's keeps getting into the Fulmer face. Benvenuti at this point seems a terribly assured fighter. He's been fighting this one, controlling the action pretty much the way he has wanted. A left to the midsection then by Fulmer. But this round Overall, I think. Well, you hear the crowd for yourselves. Round six. Benvenuti in the black trunks, Fulmer in the white, brought to you live and in color for the middleweight crown on ABC's Wide World of Sports and another warning to Dunn, Fulmer from the referee, Piero Brambia, ostensibly for butting. These European rules. Ah, a right, a glancing right. Looked better, looked more damaging than it really was by Fulmer, the right lead. These rules are terribly complex, and we will only involve you with them as the occasion demands. Home is getting a boxing lesson up till now. Bruno Armaducci was happy with a Benvenuti right that jarred Fulmer. Oh. 
Once again, the blood is coming from Benvenuti's left nostril. This can become troublesome, as Jimmy Ellis could tell you. It interferes with the fighter's breathing. Blood getting into the mouth. A minute 30 left, and this is the sixth round. Again, total quiet prevailing in the arena. There would appear to be a cut over Filmer's left eye. But at this moment, in truth, it's hard to determine whether or not it's the blood from Fulmer's nose going to Benvenuti's gloves and then going up to the eye. A right to Fulmer's upper right chest. Benvenuti fighting a superb fight thus far in terms of ring generalship. And that left eye does indeed appear to be cut. That left eye of Fulmer. he's got a mouse under the right eye Fulmer does just off the nose as we have only 25 seconds left and this is the sixth round fight thus far being dominated completely by Nino Benvenuti see that left get in there again what a weapon that's been there it is the left Fulmer desperate Round seven, middleweight title fight. San Remo, Italy, live and in color via the satellite ABC's Wide World of Sports. Ben Venuti defending and thus far defending brilliantly in the black trunks against Don Fulmer of Utah, challenging in the white. An RAI, Italian television pickup, coming to you. My own unofficial scorecard shows Ben Venuti compellingly ahead. All of the scorecards around me reflect exactly the same thing. Ben Venuti showing masterful ring generalship, really so. The left moving swiftly and steadily. And Fulmer utterly unable to cope with it. A right! A right by Fulmer! Just as I said that! A right! A right lead that's dagging him indeed, knocked him down. He's taking the mandatory eight now. Fulmer finally connected! Crowd exhorting Nino, but new life for Fulmer, who bears a cut over the right eye, a cut under the left eye, and a cut in the left nostril. But new life for Don Fulmer. With abruptness, suddenness, that right lead caught Benvenuto, who is now being wary. Fulmer with the left. Fulmer attacking, Benvenuti retreating. The first real excitement in this bout. It came in the seventh round. in the arena now. Not so quiet. Fulmer, the aggressor, pursues Benvenuti to the corner. Again, with the right lead, that time no damage. But Benvenuti has suddenly a very wary fighter. Never knew a Fulmer who didn't have courage. Ask anybody in boxing. They'll tell you about the Fulmer family. I remember when they wanted to throw the towel in for Gene Fulmer. Donald's the aggressor here again, but not landing well. In the fourth round against Dick Tiger, Fulmer was a, Gene was a thoroughly beaten fighter. He said, no, no. They finally had to stop it, but not because of Gene wanting it stopped. The brother Don is the same kind of young man. This round... Fulmer scoring with the left. He scored heavily with the right when he knocked Nino down, and he just hurt Nino again. And Nino is grabbing. The end of the seventh round. 
We're going to try and show you that knockdown again by Don Palmer. If our facilities will permit, we will show you that. There's the replay. Now watch for that right by Palmer. You will see it come in a matter of seconds. Get it. Get it. Palmer away from Benvenuti, but about to charge him. Videotape replay, seventh round. A miss by Palmer with the right, and there was the right. You saw it get through to him, and you saw Benvenuti stagger and then go down for the mandatory eight count. We're now back live, a broad scene of the ring. Palmer being administered to, and so is Nino Benvenuti as we await the start of the eighth round. For the first six rounds and 40 seconds, the fight had been compellingly Benvenuti's. Suddenly, that single blow by Fulmer gave a new complexion to things. Didn't turn the, turn the tide Don's way, but perhaps an augury of better things to come for him. Round eight. I don't know if you heard Angelo Curley say a moment ago, that's the way, baby, now you're closing in on him. He was alluding to the fact that Don is now beginning to use his own left with some degree of authority and efficiency. the eighth round blood beginning to open again on Fulmer's left eye and from the left nostril but Benvenuti's legs not appearing perhaps as strong as one might think they should be minute and a half to go bout for the middleweight championship of the world, Benvenuti in the black trunk and Fulmer in the white trunk. Benvenuti up to this point, a clear leader on point, but Fulmer scoring the only knockdown in the fight in the seventh round with a right lead that stunned Benvenuti. minutes to go and this the eighth round live and in color via the satellite ABC's wide world of sports Before we broke for the commercial, Benvenuti staggered Fulmer with that very good left of Nino's. I am told that the picture is coming into the States perhaps a little bit fuzzily because of trouble we're having. This is a satellite telecast, which I'm sure you realize. And I am also told that some of those students who have been demonstrating outside the theater have managed to break in. So far, no demonstration at ringside. Gil Clancy's unofficial scorecard next to me has Benvenuti ahead, 38 points to 35. 
Benvenuti seemed to regain control of the fight in that eighth round, the knockdown, the only one in the fight scored by Foma over Benvenuti in the seventh round. Ninth round, Benvenuti in black, Fulmer in white. Again, Benvenuti got the quick left lead to Fulmer's face, and that's what's been chopping Fulmer up all night. Minute and a half left in the ninth round. 15 round championship bout. Nino got in a right there, but no real damage after a wild and missing swing by Fulmer. However, the crowd, as I said earlier, understandably excited with every blow thrown by Nino. Sharp difference from the time these two met earlier. Ah, a right again by Fulmer. That's been his best weapon tonight. That was the weapon that Floyd Benvenuti will remember. You know, throwing the left and then dropping it so that John can come over with the right. That's been his only real weapon. Half a minute to go. Round nine. Warning to Don for butting by the referee, Piero Brambilla. No turning and facing the judges, so no automatic deduction of points. and in color via the satellite on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Nino Benvenuti in the black trunks, defending and so far successfully his middleweight crown against the challenge of Dunn Fulmer of Utah in the white trunks. All unofficial scorecards around me show Nino Benvenuti convincingly ahead. Gil Clancy, and well, a left slap in effect by Fulmer, but no damage. Gil Clancy shows Fulmer winning two rounds, the fourth and seventh. The seventh was the one knockdown of the fight, Fulmer decking Benvenuti with a right lead to the left side of the jaw. Well, the left jaw. A left to the midsection by Fulmer. That hurt Nino a little bit. That's the place to get Benvenuti if you want to weaken him enough to knock him out. Fulmer hasn't been able to do it with consistency in the fight because of that left that you see of Benvenuti, which has been working steadily and effectively. Again, a left lead by Benvenuti as Fulmer charged. That left keeps moving, working, working. See it? See it? Tenth round, Homer missing with the right. Oh, the crowd boos, thinking it's a kidney punch, which it wasn't. Homer getting a left hand high against the chest, but no damage. A minute to go in round ten. Half a minute to go in the 10th round. Benvenuti in the black trunks. Fulmer in the white. A middleweight championship bout. Thus far, hardly destined to be classed as one of the epic battles. Round 
11. Dino Benvenuti defending his middleweight crown in the black trunks against John Fulmer in the white trunks, live and in color by a satellite on ABC's Wide World of Sports just before the end of round 10. Benvenuti staggered Fulmer, as you saw, with another good punishing left. And that left has been the overall story of the fight. The only Fulmer offensive action, the right hand lead that knocked Benvenuti down for the only knockdown of the fight in the seventh round. Otherwise, all Benvenuti. No doubt how often Fulmer retreats and then suddenly charges in. That's been his tactic as a fighter almost from the beginning of his pro career. He seasoned 62 fights, 46 victories. Look at that left. You see it? Snap the head back. That's that Benvenuti left that's been dominating the bout. Again the left. Fulmer flailing in but not landing. There's the left again. The head snapping back. It's become a redundant tattoo. Piero Brambilla again won Fulmer for butting. And again, you see the blood coming out of Fulmer's cut over his left eye. The cut is over the left eye. There's a cut in the left nostril. The cut, the mouth under the right eye, has not reopened. Again, the left by Benvenuti, jarring and snapping Fulmer's head back. I must say, either Benvenuti's generally orthodox and polished style of boxing is exactly right for Fulmer, which it wasn't the last time. He must have changed something or else he's vastly improved. Fulmer gave him a real battle the last time in February of 66. Fulmer attacking on the ropes, but again flailing and not punching effectively. We have only 15 seconds left as there is another warning for butting from the referee to Don Fulmer. Left continues to dominate the bout. Ben Benuti's left. from our local station. Benvenuti in the black, Fulmer in the white. Middleweight title fight. Up to this point, Benvenuti, a compelling winner. Only one piece of damage done by Fulmer. It occurred in the seventh round. The right lead knocked Benvenuti down. The only knockdown of the fight. The mandatory eight count ensued. And then Benvenuti reassumed control with his swift and steady left jab that has been the predominant weapon in his arsenal tonight.
Minute and a half left in the 12th round. Fight keeps going this way. Nobody's going to be able to complain about home country scoring or any of that. They had that situation here not long ago, you know, when the referee ruled a no contest after the ninth round. Sandy Matsingi was getting beaten up by Freddie Little, the way the reports tell it. Forty-five seconds left to go in the twelfth round. Fulmer with a good left to Benvenuti's midsection that stung him. Well, now we're on Nino Benvenuti. We had been briefly on Don Fulmer, and now we're back at Don. As quickly, Angelo Curley again goes to work on the cut over the left eye, the cut in the left nostril, and the mouse under the right eye. And Don has been, all his life, and is tonight, a courageous fighter. But tonight, he has scored one hit, maybe a lot of errors, maybe a lot of runs. The one hit was in the seventh round, when a right lead floored Nino Benvenuti. It came from nowhere. Benvenuti had been completely dominating the fight. Benvenuti resumed command after the mandatory eight count, and he has been in command all the way because of the skillful and unending use of his left jab as his primary weapon. And if you've been with us all the way, you've been seeing that for yourselves very clearly. Round 13. Live and in color via the satellite on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the middleweight championship fight. for Nino Benvenuti tonight. Just unable to get out of the way of that left jab. Another warning to John Fulmer by referee Brambilla. Into the midsection as Fulmer charged him. Nino got him with the left to the midsection. A minute to go. And missed the 13th round. Some of you might uh, be timing these rounds for yourselves and might discover that on occasion, some rounds have seen the last three minutes and five seconds, three minutes and six. This is akin to what you saw at the Olympic Games. Because when the referee issues the warning, 
The timing of the round is suspended. We have about a half minute to go in this round. Here in San Remo, Italy, the Ariston Theater. Benvenuti against Fulmer. Fulmer now patched up over both eyes because the cut emerged over the right eye after the last round. Benvenuti himself a little patched up over the left eye. Got a kick at the end of the 13th round out of the fact that Benvenuti told the referee to warn Fulmer, and the referee warned him. As that left in there twice, as you saw, finds a ready target all the time. Two minutes to go in the 14th. Well, the blood's coming out of Benvenuti, out of Fulmer again, as you can see. As the crowd chants for a hero. Apart from that chanting, this fight has taken on all the aspects of an Italian silent movie. Even though the crowd yelled that time, that particular left didn't actually get through Fulmer's guard. That one did. judges that a point was to be deducted from Don Fulmer for butting. The amazing thing about John's fight tonight, there's a left to staggered Fulmer as he comes in the hole and hits him behind the air and there's blood coming from Nino's left ear. And the crowd is chanting now for Nino to Crowd is chanting for Nino to pick up Fulmer's blood. Meanwhile, Fulmer scored with a right hand. Right lead by Fulmer, a good left by Nino. Again, a warning from the referee to Don Fulmer. We on, see, we went three minutes and 11 seconds that time because of the warning from the referee to Fulmer on the first occasion that deducted points, and you're looking at Don now. He's pretty bloodied up, as you could see. Now you're over in the other corner. That announcement was simply to the effect that a point was taken away from Fulmer for budding. We advise you of that during the course of the round. Broad shot of the ring here in a very strange scene set for a championship fight, a theater in San Remo, Italy. You might call it Italy's Fistic Festival, especially the way the fight has gone with Benvenuti rather obviously a compelling victor, unless Fulmer can knock him out in the fifth round. In the 15th round, correction. Well, 
it's the 15th round and the crowd chants for their champion to get more of Homer's blood. And you've got to give it to Nino. He has been a very, very masterful ring general tonight. One must wonder why Fulmer's style never changed. Why he was always such easy prey for that left. Fulmo will fight as desperately as he can in this round to effect a knockout. a minute and a half to go in the round. Final round. Middleweight title bout. Live and in color via the satellites in San Remo, Italy. Benvenuti in the black trunks. Homer in the white. Crowd yells as Homer misses and Nino connects with the right. I'll be talking, hopefully, with both contestants in the ring after the fight with Benvenuti first, if circumstances permit, and then with Don Fulmer. And hopefully we will rerun for you again that seventh round knockdown by Don Fulmer of Nino Benvenuti with a right lead, Fulmer's only real score in the fight. We have about 35 seconds left. seconds to go, the crowd chanting Nino, they understand who gets the victory, I'm sure. The end of the fight, we'll be back with the decision amidst the tumult and shouting after this message. Jack. Are you going to have any communication? You're at the... On Ramo, Italy, a kind of a wild scene at the moment as they await the decision in the fight between Nino Benvenuti of Italy, the defending champion, and there it is. Nino, the winner, over Don Fulmer. And then you saw in Italian, Vinciatore, the conqueror. Let's go back now to Howard Cosell at ringside. in this ring. Bruno, let me talk to Nino if I may. Let me talk to Nino if I may. Benvenuti, the unanimous winner, compellingly by a decision as expected. And Nino, my congratulations to you. I take it it was the left jab that dominated the bout as you saw it too. Thank you. Uh, I am very, very, very happy. And uh, from the, the left uh, jab, how are we? No, 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 no trouble. No trouble uh, with, with uh, jab. Much easier than you thought. Uh, yes, it's tough, very tough. But I am uh, in speed. No fight, no easy, no easy. But uh, I am uh, tonight very, very speed. When are you coming back to the United States to fight? Next, next fight. Next fight, I defend defender in the uh, United States. You want? 
Yes, we'd love to have you back. Thank you. You fought a compelling fight tonight. Again, our congratulations to you. We look forward to having you back in the States. And in the bedlam of the ring, let's depart San Remo Italy for Jim McKay. Thank you. Okay, Howard, so it went in the little Aristan Theater in the Riviera Resort of San Remo. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Benvenuti Fulmer Fight, produced by Chet Forty. Our associate directors, Don Olmeyer, Larry Cam, Bernie Hoffman, and Norman Samet. Coordinating producer, Jim Spence. In New York, our director was Marvin Schlenker. And the technical director, Johnny Broderick. Don't forget, now next week, we'll have a special edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. The outstanding moments in the 1968 Winter and Summer Olympic Games. Well, right now, however, this is Jim McKay saying so long until next week. Made through United Airlines, who also furnished promotional consideration.